Okay, we're going to be going over how to completely 100% break down an M60 machine gun bolt. Um, this is an important video because this can be a little difficult, uh, more so when you're disassembling the front ends of the bolt. It's tight in there, there's a lot of springs, and it can be very tricky to take apart and put back together. The tools that you're going to need to uh, perform this or uh, it's nothing specialty per se, but uh, you're going to need a small hammer, um, preferably as always one with a nice soft fiberglass end and then a brass end. You're going to need like a, a pick tool. A screwdriver can also work, but we'll show you. Um, this is going to make it a little easier to remove the extractor. And you're going to need a punch. Uh, I don't have a proper punch on hand but the punch is going to be to remove roll pins. This will do for the purposes of what I'm doing. And we'll get to that and you'll uh, you'll see see why we need it. So let's move the camera in so we can focus on this bolt. So we're going to start with the back end of the bolt because simply um, the internals and the back end are just uh, the easiest stuff to take apart. We're going to take our little um, L-shaped scraper type tool and what we're going to do is we're going to rotate our actuator until we see it lined up with the bolt plug pin. And as I'm removing these components I'll explain to you what the names of them are, the proper names. So all we're going to do is just push down on this bolt plug pin and as we can see came out of the bottom. This isn't to be confused with a roll pin. Um, this is a solid uh, metal pin only used for the bolt plug. Now once that pin has been removed we can go ahead and rotate our bolt plug off. It'll rotate right out of there and again that's our bolt plug. There's two different types of these. This is an older variant um, where this can be turned with a wrench and then there's just a flat one where you, there's no, uh, it's basically just a flat bolt. Once that's off, our actuator is going to slide right off the back end of the bolt. Again, that's our actuator. The purpose of that actuator, that's what drives our uh, feed cam and our top cover. Now, um, once we have that out, we have our firing pin, our firing pin, our firing pin spring, and our cam. I've just pushed this a little back towards the back of the bolt, just enough to bring the firing pin spring out, and that can simply be removed by hand. That's our firing pin spring. Push this a little further with our thumb, and then we have our cam. Remember which way this goes in. Um, this semi-solid front part always goes forward and the spring goes in the back. Some people will put these in backwards like that and then they'll try to ram a spring in there and wonder why it won't fit. Again, that's the back side, that's the front side, that's our firing pin cam. And Just rotate it out, not rotate it, just slide out the back and we have our firing pin. So that's the easy part of this bolt to disassemble and as I've explained in my previous videos after we're firing that's as far as we'll break it down to clean the bolt and basically so you know we can get really good inside there the bolt body and the front end of the bolt is a little more complicated and because it's so difficult, I don't want to say difficult, but because it can be difficult more so to put back together than take apart, we usually don't take the front of that apart for cleaning purposes. But as I've stated in previous videos, if you've just bought a, you know, a new bolt and you don't know uh, the cleanliness of it, then you want to take this apart and make sure the parts are clean in there. They may have never been clean. Now, if you have a bolt like uh, Zoom out. If you do buy a bolt and it's like this, it's you know it's brand new. Uh, the parkerization's not missing on the front. We can see that. Um, just 
obvious that the, the bolt is brand new, I would say there's absolutely no need to take the front end apart to clean it. Or more so uh, talking about used bolts here. So let's zoom in and we'll take the front of this apart. Now, on the front end of this, what you're going to see is on the top is we have our extractor here. And behind that extractor is a little hole in this slot, and that's a detent. That's what holds our extractor on. To remove this, and this is why you need this L-shaped tool, you could use a screwdriver if you wanted to. You just don't want to mar the finish up. We'll just put that in that detent, and we're going to pull that backwards. But there's a tremendous amount of spring pressure on here. So what you want to do is, when you do this, you want to make sure it's you're holding it firmly against the table, and you're kind of holding the front end down with your thumb and you can get an ex your uh, tool in there. What I'll do is I'm going to pull this back and when I when I do pull this this detent back you're going to push down on the front of the extractor and then the back end will come up. So we'll do that right now. I'm trying to do it in a way that the camera can see it. I'm going to hold this up and have it against my body. So, <clears throat> I had to hold that against my body for some counter pressure and so that the camera could see it. So, there's our spring there, and basically, now that our extractor's out. We can pull that right out. And that's our extractor spring. And you want to be careful with this spring because this uh, this front portion, which you need, I'm trying to focus, which you need to mount your extractor, it can come off this spring. You don't want to lose it. And the way this works is you can see there's a little lip on the front of this and there's also a little lip on the back of your extractor so when it's sitting in the bolt the front is locked down and the spring is pushing against this holding the back on so that's our extractor spring we'll get a look at our extractor now our top has been removed you can get some buildup in here uh, there's no doubt about it it's something you want to clean this is a used bolt uh, when I got this, I made sure I took it apart and cleaned it. So we're moving on to the last portion of our bolt that we need to remove, and that's the ejector. Um, this is the ejector down at the bottom. This is what knocks the rounds off the bolt once it uh, pulls out of the chamber of the barrel. There's a tremendous amount of spring pressure on this uh, ejector. This ejector is held in place with a single roll pin, and we can see that roll pin right here. Now this is important. Um, you don't want to mess these roll pins up. So get yourself a proper punch um, to knock these out and put them back in just so you're not messing the edges up. I don't have one on hand right now, but typically it's the same. You can go to any uh, hardware store and get a punch that is the proper uh, circumference of this. So um, this ejector, again, has a tremendous amount of spring pressure in it. So if we were just holding this on its side and we knocked this out too far, this thing is going to go flying literally 100 miles an hour out of here. I've had it happen. It's ugly. So what we want to do is we want to hold our bolt facing down as we're knocking this uh, roll pin out. That way, once the pin's out, the ejector and spring, we're not going to lose. So applying pressure to that. We're going to line our, uh, our punch up with our, uh, trying to get this in the camera, with our roll pin. And we're going to start knocking. And we're not hammering on this very hard. We're just working it. A little bit at a time, especially if it's the first time you're doing it because we, we don't want this to go flying. This ejector is going to come out of here before this roll pins all the way out. Okay. 
So you can see down here, the roll pin is not all the way out. It's still hanging in the edge of the bolt, but we'll lift this up. There's our ejector and our ejector spring. And these can get filthy too. And again, it's one of those things, same as your extractor. If you just bought a bolt and it's used, again, this is well used. You can tell there's no parkerization left on this uh, ejector. We want to take it apart and just clean it and uh, make sure it's cleaned thoroughly. And we also want to make sure our springs are in good order. These ejector springs uh, can break. They have a tendency to break after X amount of service life. And it's something you want to have spares of. You can get these cheap. I have lots of them. So, again, we can see our roll pin still inside. I don't take it out all the way. There's no need to take it out all the way. Um, the way this ejector is held in is this uh, notch that's cut out on the side of it goes up when you're reinstalling this and then once it's in you hammer this uh, roll pin back down and that's what holds this in place. That's 100% broken down and uh, once it's broken down like this you want to clean it thoroughly with CLP put a light coat of CLP on all the components and reassemble. Now I will warn you, reassembly can be quite difficult for the front end, uh, mainly because there's such a tremendous amount of spring pressure on these. So basically to reinstall our uh, ejector, I'm not going to go over how to completely how to do it, but I will show you how. Again, the notch facing up behind the spring, we can see there's a ton of pressure on here. Basically what we're going to do is, we're going to take this and we're going to push it up a very hard surface, like that. So we're sitting on the edge of this table and it's flush with the bolt. And then we're going to take our hammer and we're going to work our pin in. So you can see, camera back over, we can see our ejector has been reinstalled properly and now um, this roll pin is just sitting out the side of the bolt a little still. So what we'll do is we'll take our punch, hold it on top of the roll pin, give it a couple good whacks, and it's in. You want that roll pin to be flush um, with the sides of the bolt. So our ejector's been reinstalled properly. Um, the extractor can be a little more difficult Again, our extractor pin just goes in. Now there's a ton of spring pressure on this. You want the detent, that little hole, facing upward. So what you do is, you take your, uh, you take your, well first of all, to install this, the front end must go in first. It's got to go in first like that, and then the back end pushes down. But the spring has to be all the way in here in order to get this lip down below it. So what we'll do is we take our uh, extractor spring, and put it in there, and there's a tremendous amount of pressure on it, spring pressure on this. This one's a lot uh, more difficult to install the injector. And we'll, what we'll do is we'll actually use our our uh, extractor to push this back. This is hard to do it holding up with the camera. I usually set it on the table. Okay. So, all right, now we can see our detent there. What we'll do is we'll take our, um, I'm gonna have to set this on the table, guys. We'll take our tool and we'll put it in the detent to hold it from going forward too much. <laughs> just came off. Like I said, these pieces can come off if they do. You just push them back in, they're just held by a nub. Again. Use our, uh, use our extractor to push this in. Once 
once in, we'll hold it in place with our tool. You can see uh, it's held in place now. <coughs> Put the front end of the extractor in first. And we'll pull back. <laughs> it's a workout. And it's in place. So, um, again, the front of this uh, extractor has to go in first. And then once you pull this back, far enough which is very difficult to do then you push the back down and then this goes forward and that lip we talked about holds this in place okay so just i guess i'll finish this now um firing pin zoom out firing pin once it's lubricated and clean goes in the back then we have our cam remember the semi-solid uh, portion first Firing pin spring, actuator, you want the uh, roller forward. And we'll take our bolt plug, just screw it in, and what we're going to do is we're going to line these holes up. Take our bolt plug. Put it in place and we want to we want it sitting down there just enough so that our actuator can rotate freely and that has how you completely assemble and uh correction that is how you completely disassemble and then reassemble the m60 machine gun bolt